you. Um, welcome to the 16th <laughs> meeting of 2015 in the Rural Affairs, Climate Change and Environment Committee. Uh, before we move to the item, remember to switch off your mobile phones if they're noisy. We can interfere with the thought processes of the members here. And uh, uh, there are, of course, tablets being used for the business of the committee. We have apologies from Alec Ferguson and from Dave Thompson. Um, the agenda item one is the decision on taking items in private. So this first agenda item is a decision on whether to consider the draft letter to the Scottish Government on mandatory public sector climate reporting in private future meetings of the committee. Uh, is there anybody any comments to make? Um, Mr Russell. I have no comment to make on that item, but I'd like to raise, before the Minister uh, speaks, I'd like to raise another item uh, on the agenda, which is the, uh, my request that the committee recall a representative of First Milk, and I would suggest that the invitation be given to the Chairman and to the new Chief Executive to um, give evidence to the committee about milk pricing. Members will be aware, I think, that on Friday, uh, First Milk communicated with its Scottish suppliers reducing the price by 0.2 pence of a litre, which is very serious indeed. But even more seriously, for the 13 Butte producers, the price is reduced by 1.2 pence a litre, which makes the price something just over 16 pence a litre. This is utterly uneconomic and disastrous, but it also breaches what the co cooperative has done up until now, which is to pay the same price to everybody for their milk. The reason being given to the Butte farmers is because of cost of transportation, but this figure would suggest that the cost of transportation is something between 350 and 400,000 a year. That's nearly double what the actual cost of transportation is. This is deeply resented in Butte. There's huge anger. A director of First Milk attended a meeting on Sunday and I think realised it. It is very important that the committee understands what First Milk are doing, particularly as this appears to be a threat to the viability of dairy farming in Butte. Uh, thanks for that. Uh, we have agreed previously to take the work programme in private and I suggest to members that we discuss that matter in private uh, during that work programme period because we'll have to review items that we've dealt with before. So thank you for that, Mike. Um, we can accept then that we'll take the item on uh, the mandatory public sector climate reporting issue in private. Are we agreed? Agreed. We're agreed. Thank you very much. Agenda item two. Subledge, um, and this is the committee consideration of the draft climate change additional greenhouse gas Scotland order instrument to be laid under the affirmative procedure, which means Parliament must approve it before provisions may come into force. Following this evidence session, the committee will be invited to consider the motion to approve the instrument under agenda item three. I welcome the Minister. Dr. Elaine MacLeod and uh, her official uh, George Burgess, the Deputy Director of Environmental Quality Division, and ask the Minister to speak to the instrument. Uh, thank you, uh, Convener, and uh, good morning. And uh, thanks for uh, inviting me to discuss the draft climate change additional greenhouse gas Scotland Order 2015. The order adds nitrogen trifluoride to the list of greenhouse gases covered by the Climate Change Scotland Act 2009 and designates 1995 as the baseline year against which progress to reduce emissions will be measured. This addition means that emissions of nitrogen trifluoride will be accounted for in determining progress towards emission reduction targets set under the Act. Now, nitrogen trifluoride is a potent greenhouse gas that is highly effective at trapping atmospheric heat Every tonne of nitrogen trifluoride emitted into the atmosphere has an equivalent warming potential to 17,200 tonnes of carbon dioxide. Globally, emissions of nitrogen trifluoride are small but rising. And in recognition of the impact on climate change, the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change has added nitrogen trifluoride to the list of Kyoto greenhouse gases for the second Kyoto commitment period, which runs from 2013 to 2020, and that should be reported in national inventories. In light of international agreement, Scottish ministers sought advice from the UK Committee on Climate Change, who advised that it is appropriate that Scotland's contribution to meeting the global climate objective should include domestic nitrogen trifluoride emissions. 
In the UK, nitrogen trifluoride is emitted in extremely small quantities and its only source is in the semiconductor manufacture industry. Now, the Committee on Climate Change has advised that at the UK level, emissions of nitrogen trifluoride are currently less than 1,000 tonnes of carbon dioxide equivalent per year, with no significant rises expected to 2050. Inclusion of nitrogen trifluoride in Scotland's accounting will not require any changes to legislated emissions reduction targets. Scottish greenhouse gas emissions data for 2013 will be published in June, and it will include nitrogen trifluoride for the first time. So this order will require those emissions to be included in determining progress towards the targets set under the Climate Change Scotland Act 2009. Adding nitrogen trifluoride to the list of targeted gases under the Climate Change Scotland Act 2009 will ensure consistency with international agreements and is consistent with advice from the UK Committee on Climate Change. So I commend the Climate Change Additional Greenhouse Gas Scotland Order 2015 to the Committee and I'm happy to answer any questions the Committee may have. Thank you, uh, Minister. Uh, members have any questions? Yes, Graham Day, Mike Russell. I, th I think the Minister's kind of answered this, but I just want to be clear. Changes to the baseline, um, the important baseline, have contributed to our failure to uh, reach the reduction targets that we'd set. Is there any potential or any significant potential in this move having the same effect or adding to the problem? Um, no, no. It's... Um, I mean, emissions of nitrogen trifluoride are estimated using a UK-wide model, and we won't know the level of nitrogen um, trifluoride emissions in Scotland, obviously, until the 2013 uh, greenhouse gas emissions data is uh, published in June. However, as I've said in my opening remarks, the Committee on Climate Change advises that at the UK level, emissions of nitrogen trifluoride are currently less than one uh, kiloton of uh, carbon dioxide equivalent per year, with no significant rises expected until 2050. Thank you. Mike Russell. I think this comes into the category of an unknown unknown in the Donald Rumsfeld's uh, um, ca categorisation, but I want to ask it anyway. Adding additional gases to the, the, the package uh, seems to be unusual. Uh, are there a range of other gases which are being considered? Or are there unknown issues which are constantly being thought about? It's a, it's a curious thing, but I think people will be slightly surprised that at this stage uh, we will be adding gases to uh, the gases we're concerned about. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, just as a wee bit of background, obviously, in its second phase, the Kyoto Protocol limits um, developed countries' emissions of seven uh, greenhouse gases released by human activities, those being carbon dioxide, uh, methane, uh, nitrous oxide and the four types of fluorated um, gases that have been developed specifically for industrial uh, applications. But there are certain other um, industrial gases such as uh, chlorofluorocarbons and hydrochlorofluorocarbons um, which contribute to both uh, global warming and the depletion of the ozone layer but they're not covered by the Kyoto Protocol <laughs> as they're being phased out under the Montreal uh, Protocol in protecting the ozone layer. So, in other words, this might be the end of that ma this matter. You can't imagine there will be other ones added, unless other gases are developed for, for manufacturing purposes. Uh, <coughs> I, th I think your comment about it being a, an unknown, um, unknown is, is, is very accurate. If you look back at the history of this, when the Kyoto Protocol was, was first introduced, there was virtually no use of nitrogen trifluoride. Uh, at all in the semiconductor industry. What happened was that other gases, um, such as the sort of um, um, <coughs> hexafluoroethane, which were used, were identified as being uh, potent, potent ozone depleting substances, and therefore the industry moved towards this other category, nitrogen trifluoride, uh, which didn't have that um, effect on ozone. Now industry is moving to a different set of gases, elemental fluorine in particular, which, which, has, which has neither of the, mm. the, the, the harmful effects. But yes, I mean, at, at an international level. These are manufactured level, gases which are then yes. considered to be damaging. So in manufacturing new gases, then it is not only ozone depletion, but also uh, other considerations are taken into account. Yes. <coughs> Anybody else? 
wish to comment. I just ask, thought I would ask you, Minister, about the fact that you know there's clearly being a reassessment made from this discussion uh, just now about the impacts of particular gases, uh, but a recognition of the uh, strengthening in our uh, targeting of methane, uh, an increase in parts per thousand. Uh, I can see from the UK climate change and the UK and the Scottish government's own, um, you know, target lists. Uh, would you say, therefore, you know, that this uh, toughening of the targets um, opens up the, the big questions for the creators of those gases and for the industries that use them to be playing a major part in making sure that we do reduce uh, the use of these harmful gases at this time, and that that's part of the ways in which uh, the government will meet the, the, the targets which the Parliament set back in 2009? I think the answer to that simply is, is yes. I mean, you mentioned uh, methane in particular. The global warming potential of that has been uprated from 21 uh, to 25, so it's now considered to be 25 times more potent than carbon dioxide. Therefore, we need to look ever more closely at those areas, particularly agriculture and waste management, that are the main uh, methane emitters that contribute to uh, our, um, our, our Scottish inventory. Both of those are areas that there's already a considerable amount of work being done on, uh, and uh, we will look at that ever more closely. Uh, there was a debate yesterday on, on peatlands. Uh, one of the issues we need to look at very closely there is that in the long term, peatland uh, is a very good carbon dioxide emitter, but in the very initial stages of restoration, there is actually a small methane spike. So we need to balance those effects as we consider how we, how we go forward and how we can count the benefits of uh, uh, peatland re-wetting. Re well, I'm trying to focus on the uh, HF4. Um, Sarah Boyer. Thank you very much, Convener. I think this exchange has been very useful in flagging up that when we come to the RPP, this is a new issue that needs to be on the agenda, partly for business, partly for agriculture, and I think we can really explore this um, when we get to that point um, later in the year. But I think it's, it's clearly something that we need to pass. Um, there's more scientific information now, and the challenges for us as... Uh, people scrutinising what the government does to see how it fits in the government's challenge, but also more widely for um, business and industry and agriculture um, to pick up the fact that we are, I think, going to pass this today and it becomes another challenge for people in tackling climate change. Indeed. Thank you. I don't know if you want to respond or not, but uh, oh, if not, um, uh, th thank you very much. I think we'll move on to agenda item three on the debate just now. Uh, which uh, would be uh, the consideration of motion S4M13047 and asking the committee to recommend approval of the affirmative instrument Climate Change Additional Greenhouse Gas Scotland Order Draft. Um, and we have as much, a lot of time to discuss this if required. However, I hope that probably we may not. So uh, I would invite the Minister to speak and move the motion. Uh, thank you, Convener, and I, uh, I move the motion to recommend the draft order be approved. Thank you very much. Um, I wonder if there are any members who wish to comment. If there are none, and the Minister doesn't wish to wind up, um, no, no, no wish to wind up, then I put the question. The question is that motion S4M 13047 in the name of Aileen MacLeod be approved. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are all agreed. So we will record the result that the committee's report confirms the outcome of the debate. And I thank uh, Aileen MacLeod and her official. So we, we now uh, move on to future meeting details. At the next meeting of the committee on the 13th of May, we'll consider two negative instruments, the welfare of animals at the time of killing, Scotland Amendment Regulation 2015, SSI 2015-161, Hod me back, <laughs> as been said. Uh, the Common Agriculture Policy non iax Support Schemes Appeals Scotland Amendment Regulations 2015, SSI 2015-167. And the committee will also consider a draft letter to the Scottish Government on mandatory public sector climate reporting 
As agreed at the previous meeting, the committee will now move into private session to consider its work programme. And I now close the public part of the meeting and ask the public gallery to be cleared. <laughs>